Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade, and this is How to App on iOS. And today, we are going to be having a look at True Pants. True Pants. True Pants. It's wicked, it's awesome, and it's just as good as today's featured artist, which is Jamie Mallinder. This is his brand new track, Relentless. Jamie Mellander, jamiemellander.co.uk, boom, he's awesome, isn't he? Uh, if you don't know Jamie, I've interviewed him on the show, he's, he's an amazing artist, uh, he's played with some amazing bands like Saxon, and he's just, he's done everything, he's an incredibly talented, I've interviewed him, he's done a live stream, he played on the opening hour, he's incredible, he's got a YouTube channel where he reviews apps, makes music, what doesn't he do? 
plays live all the time. He's a celebrity. And he's the new bass player for the Delicate Giants. There you go. It says it all. Russ thinks he's awesome as well. Wicked. There's a pinned comment up in the chat. Click on it. Go subscribe to him now. He's awesome. He makes great music. And uh, there's also a song whip link up the top there as well. So you can go and stream or get his music on Bandcamp. It's all there in the pinned comment. Go and do it. Do yourself a favor. Make yourself happy. Hello. Welcome to the show. I'm Jay. This is How to App on iOS. Every day we take a look at apps, recording music, making video clips, interviews with amazing people like Hugh Caldwell, who's on the show tomorrow. And every weekend I do a live performance. There's so much stuff that happens on this channel. So if you haven't hit the subscribe, do it or don't. And hit the like and all that jazz. Also, I'd like to welcome our Ward Warriors for a dollar a month. We got like 70 something Ward Warriors. So thank you for being Ward Warriors. You get cool custom emojis in the chat and all that jazz. And we're doing another Sunday roast very soon. The announcement if will be up on the members part of my channel soon for the roast featuring me and Russ and Dot criticizing your songs. <laughs> telling you telling you all how crap you are. All right, let's welcome everybody in the chat today. Thanks for all for being here. Uh, Gregory O'Sullivan, Hugh Caldwell, who's on the show tomorrow. Jamie Melander, whose song we just listened to. Leela, who just had a fantastic stream playing live music as she does every week around this time. Thomas Christ, who is the head moderator of this channel and will be up next playing your music live, not your music live though, it's you rock. And Thomas is premiering my new video clip today. So that's really exciting. Um, there's Barry Glenn. Uh, who else do we see? There's a scroll. Joe Glenn is here as well. There's Joe, Metalhead Hippie. Boom. Uh, who else? Who else do I see? Many Vibes, hello to you. Now, I must say, folks, make sure you got headphones on today. There's no point watching this show today with no headphones. You won't get anything out of this. This is a binaural headphone edition. You need to have headphones on. There, the headphone announcement is out the way. Cold Acre. Who else do I see? Have I missed anyone? There's Mateus. Good to see you. And Russ. And uh, who else? Have I missed anyone? I don't think I've missed anyone. If I have, I'm a doofus. I'm scrolling as much as I can. Good. Uh, so headphones are must, okay? Make sure you get headphones on because you won't hear a goddamn thing. We are looking at a really cool app today called TruePan. It is wicked. Uh, where are we? Henry Music. Hello. What's going on? We are looking at this amazing app today called TruePan. It is wicked. Now, Spatializer was an app that came out last year that everybody loved. Spatializer is an incredible app. And this is the successor to Spatializer. Different in its own uh, respect. Absolutely different. Let's uh, jump over here and take a look at the Beat Community. The Beatcommunity.com is your one-stop shop for all Price discounts, new releases on desktop software, samples, expansions, and iOS software. There's a link down the bottom in the description, right at the bottom for the beatcommunity.com. Go and add it to your favorites. It says here that Spatializer has been dropped today. And Quantavox is the company who've released TruePan and Spatializer. Uh, so you can see here, Spatializer is on sale as well from $9.99 to $6.99. Hello, Brad. Brad Examples here. Yay. Good to see you too, licky boy. Licky, licky boy. Um, nothing's really changed in price drop since yesterday. Still a huge number of quality apps on sale at the moment, including Synthmaster and Ravenscroft, Pure Piano Upright, all those apps there. But today we're looking at TruePan. It comes in at a steal at $4.99. It's cheap as chips. I I don't think it says it's a, um, it's not a, like a, like a, a reduced price at the moment. It looks like that's going to be the price. It's a small download. It's only 5.5 meg, works on both iOS, iPad, iPhone. So you're good there. It doesn't work on M1 Max, just to be clear. Shall we tell you what it does? Because it's a hard one to explain. That's what I'm saying. You're going to need headphones for this, Hi Princess. TruePan is a tool for repositioning stereo sounds. 
that preserves every last bit of stereo field information, right? So its, it's whole purpose is to maintain the highest quality of the stereo field information. Preserving stereo image geometry, TruePan makes it possible to perform panoramic rotations of an entire stereo field while retaining all spatial information contained within the audio input. If the input is compromised of, uh, uh, comprised of multiple differently positioned components, TruePan will preserve their spatial relationships as everything is rotated together. Okay. Um, so true pan brings the quality preserving properties of mono input panning to a stereo world free of heavy processing. It's lean algorithm is zero latency, zero phase delay, and has a flat frequency response while tools with more elaborate algorithms produce culminative effects that may impact sound quality. True pans approach to quality preservation is demonstrated by its ability to transform processed audio back to its original state. So I'm reading this out because it's hard to encapsulate, you know, exactly what it does. We're going to look at a few different things. We're going to look at some mono inputs, some stereo inputs, and we're going to take a listen to some binaural field recordings. So if any of you have heard a binaural field recording where someone's gone out and recorded and, and parts of the street right? People talking will be over to the side here, cars over here. It picks up and splits the audio around a stereo 360 degree. We're going to take a look at a file like that and see what it does to that. So it says here, TruePan is a great tool for making adjustments to field recordings without degrading, 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 degrading captured spatial information. Okay. So let me open up a project. Now I've, um, I've chosen to use something like a Glitchscaper and create a huge soundscape today with different um, settings for each of them. So you should hear a whole lot of stuff going on in your headphones. Let's just call it stuff. I'll shut up. We'll just play this and enjoy the craziness that is about to ensue.
Okay, so pretty mayhemic stuff going on there. Um, <laughs> it's all over the place. All right, let's. We'll start with this track here, and we'll uh, we'll rein this in. We'll bring this all back to zero. Let's bring all this back to zero, and uh, try to explain. Take out spatializer. So the difference. Let's talk about the difference between spatializer and true pan. So here is spatializer. This was released last year, and it's you know everybody loves Spatializer. It's an incredible app where it can take a mono sound and stereo sound, and, and it can spread it wide. It can do some incredibly cool spreading effects. Let's uh, show you that first. Make sure all our volumes are down here. So with Spatializer, we can bring things in close. We can move things out far away. It's more of a widener than anything else. Can be used really subtly. So completely different than uh, what we're looking at with TruePan, where TruePan can take, TruePan's built for a stereo input, right? It's definitely made for stereo inputs. Now, the amazing thing about uh, using Glitchscaper as a demo here is that the, the panning for a lot of these soundscapes that are built in as presets have already have a lot of panning going on naturally without any of these effects. So you can see, just by the input of our little, uh, what do they call it, a gigioscope, whatever it's called. You can see how things are panning. What's really cool is, uh, with our, our little, whoops, our little uh, monitor here, is we can change the look of this. Before we get into it, we can change the look of this. So we've got these four, five pages down the bottom. So you can get different readouts, whichever one suits you, and you can edit these to how you like. You have an edit button at the top here, and you can actually change the configuration of how they look, how many sectors, You can make them black and white, and then you can save these into each uh, little page down here. So I can hit save. If I hit save now to this. So now page five will look like this. So you can go in and edit these to your heart's content. You can turn them off if you don't want to see that. Let's go back into five and edit it to the way I like it. Nice color meter there. And we can save that how we want it. And we're done. Let's get out of edit. So we have our little directional button here. Now I can move this by itself. And let's hear what happens.
What's really cool is this comes with uh, LFOs, right? So basically they're LFOs. And it's controlled with our motion button. So if I turn this up a little bit to the left, to the right, sorry, you'll start to see our direction knob moving. We can speed this up. So now we're actually creating this almost tremolo effect. I'm just going to leave it uh, Okay, let's turn this down. So there are two modes for this. We've got mode one and mode two. Now you'll see when I change to mode two, you get these little sections around the outside. So the difference between the two modes is mode one, it's taking the input, okay? Uh, the, the, and the angles are being mapped directly from the input. Okay, whatever. so in mode one here, whatever the input is, it is mapping it how it is. With mode two, it is taking the input signals and it's remapping, uh, it's remapping these sounds to eliminate uh, interleaved left and right quadrants. I know you're probably going, what the fuck? It doesn't matter what it means. It's incredible what it does, yeah? So it creates a more intuitive kind of uh, control for like more transformative kind of stuff, yeah? Let's uh, put this in motion now. So you can hear it's really almost going front, back, forward. So one of the main objectives uh, that Quantavox were trying to create with this is to make an algorithm that did its very best to maintain the original input sound. Because with a lot of things like this, it can the, the input sound can get fucked up and get destroyed well, for what it's trying to do. So the main focus is to try and keep that sound as high as, as the quality as high as possible, yeah? Now, with our motion, we are currently set to just whatever. You can see when I move this, you can see here it's uh, free moving. So it's not locked to our BPM. If I hit this little note, it's now locked to the BPM. So notice here, let's make this larger so you can see. As I move the motion, we're now moving in bars. Four bars. 
to dotted to our usual being locked to the BPM. Now we also have down here the ability to change our uh, our waveforms. So you notice now. You'll notice now it jumping around. If we slow this down. We're getting more of a random back and forward. So we've got four different waveforms we can move here. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> that's, that's wicked. Now see that? See this directional inversion here? It's happening. It's popped up up here. There we go, directional inversion, more info. Let's have a look at this. Let's talk about it. In mode two, panning plus 45 degrees can result in an output which is positioned opposite of what's expected. This is caused by excessive channel correlation to the audio input. The guidelines for avoiding this effect are make sure the input is not narrow, Check that the pre-width control is not set to a low level. Using a 45 width control, try to focus on the output down uh, to the correct direction. So they try and compensate for this issue, which can, how do I get out of this? Cool, we're out of it. Now remember, all of these parameters are open as well in here. So you can LFO the shit out of this as well. You could LFO the motion to, to go back and forward as well. We could take that, um, where are we? Our, our mod rate, tempo sync. So we can LFO all of this stuff to move these as well. We do it now. Am I in the wrong? I'm in the wrong section. I always do that. Or was I in the right place? I think I wasn't. Here we go. So we've got a Rosetta LFO here. Uh, can we do it? Yes. I can't select it. That's interesting. Do I have to put it in the same f f chain? Uh, I think I have to put it in the same chain, don't I, for an effect. No, maybe not. What am I doing wrong? I'm doing something wrong. Where am I going? But we can do it anyway. I'm, I'm getting off the point. I've only got a, a short amount of time because Thomas is up next. Um, yeah, low-flying object. That's what it is. <laughs> so you'll notice between... Let's go back here. Notice between these two modes, when I change them, our little width section here down the bottom changes. We get this pre at addition. And without it, we don't have this pre. So this width here is a stereo widener. 
We can widen this or we can bring it right into a mono signal. See this, how it's come right back to this single sound. And now it sounds more like it's being panned now. It's moving around, but it's just a pan because it's a... But as we widen it, Now in mode two, we have the option to add a pre with, well, we can pull this right down and then we've got a post. So you can really create some very, very unique stuff. I'm gonna jump over to the instructions and, and show you if you get lost, which even when I read the instructions, I'm still lost. I just know what sounds good. <laughs> That's all that matters. So you can get to a quick start guide down here, which gives you a an explanation of stuff. Let's move over to, we've gone through our modes. Here's our width and gain control. This is where we're up to at the moment. So the width setting can be used to, to pre-adjust the stereo spread of the output uh, of the audio input. Gain control comes into play when width is significantly changed, especially when direction is modulated over time. High quality gain compensation is the key to avoiding volume drops or a pulsating amplitude envelope. So what, what these things here are doing, and there's three sections, adaptive dynamically selects the best gain compensation profile by monitoring the input. So this is like a your, your friend, yeah? This is your best friend. It's always monitoring the sound that's coming in to make sure if anything's dropping too low or anything's too high, it's going to do its best to compensate for it. And that's the secret of this app that is all about the, uh, the it's not so much the compression, but the, the gain control to, to create the best possible experience for what it's trying to do. This is a no mean feat. Profiled, always on demand analysis of the input to create a static gain profile. This is the highest quality option, free of, de uh, free of detection latency or sensitivity to intermittent changes, standard, the input agnostic gain culmination, similar to those MS tools. Let's get out of here. So you can hear straight away when we went to adaptive from standard, the volume increased because now it's, it's actually seeking that input and doing its best to compensate for volume drops Bring it back up, volume-wise. So you can see when I turn that down, when I brought this back into a mono sound, we got this directional inversion, which is not what we want to see. As I said, this is definitely made for more for stereo sounds. And I'll show you why that is in a second. So incredible for uh, for soundscapes, definitely. Yeah. Let's stop it. Let's bring in a new channel here, and I'm going to load. Hey, Rhett, what's happening? I'm going to load from my file player a binaural file, an audio field recording that is in binaural. So we can see what it does to that. Yeah. Let's grab this. So this is just like a, uh, a city soundscape. If we'll loop it, let's make sure we can loop this. So we'll set it on a loop and uh, we'll just play this. So as you can hear, this is recorded out in the street and you can hear People over to the right, cars and traffic over here. We're going to add True Pan to this and see how it affects this binaural recording.
and you can see exactly what's going on here. There's more happening over in this field with this recording. We've got people talking over here. But let's move it around. Let's move the traffic over to the bottom right. How cool is that? And there's no like degrading of the file. You can see we can add more width to it. Let's add some motion to it. I'm starting to feel sick. <laughs> Now we can also go in reverse. We can also bring in the, we are totally listening to a wet mix at the moment. So when you open this up, it automatically defaults to a wet mix, but we can actually bring in the original input. So now we've got an even mix. Yeah, the visualizer is beautiful. It really is. So for binaural recordings, beautiful, really amazing how you can just move the, the sound around to displace it completely somewhere else. This is some high tech shit. And you know what? It's five bucks. Fuck it. It's, it's amazing. Five bucks. Okay. So the other thing it works really well with is for um, reverb, right? Reverb is a thing that uh, when you're using uh, stereo widening or anything like that, reverb can cause a whole lot of problems. If you've ever like uh, been recording something, you've added reverb into the chain and you've got some kind of... Uh, stereo widen or some kind of effect like that, it doesn't understand reverb because reverb, you know, it's a huge room with splashing sounds and stuff. This is really built for reverb. And I'm going to show you, uh, first what we're going to do is just grab, uh, I want to show you with a microphone how cool this is. So where this works amazing is for, just consider, with our audio interfaces, yeah, we have two inputs on our audio interfaces. And you can choose with a microphone here, when you go to your input, let me bring up the screen as well. So with your microphones, you have the option to choose a stereo input where you can have two, uh, a mic, say your guitar going into one, plugged into your guitar, and then a microphone in front of your acoustic. So you're recording two, uh, a stereo input of a guitar recording, right? So think about that. You would be able to select one and two and put in a stereo guitar signal and then add something like this on it and it'd sound mint. We're gonna do it with vocals just cause I've got them on hand. So I've selected my mini fuse, 
with a microphone here, and I've got another microphone here as well, right? So if we take out all these effects, let's bring up this microphone. Hello, hello. So when you're using uh, inputs into an interface and you've got it set to stereo, of course, one mic's coming out one side and this mic's coming out the other side, yeah? Let's give it a bit more volume here. There we go. Hello. So we've got two microphones, one and two, but putting them together, we're creating a stereo sound here. So let's just do it. Uh, bring this in here and we'll get this mode. So now that we have this directional happening, we're pulling a mono sound coming out of one side. Hello. Uh... Uh... Really, really fascinating stuff. Now, if I change this to just a mono input, change this to just a mono microphone here we're not going to get the same kind of effect because we're getting just a mono input and this is not what this is built for now we're just getting it just you can see we're getting a directional inversion all the time look at this it's it's warning us directional inversion directional inversion because we're only putting through a mono sound let's change it back uh... So you can see with a, an electric uh, or, a, you know, two guitar inputs coming in here, creating a stereo sound, you're going to be able to create some really fascinating stuff with this. If we add some stereo width. Uh, tremolo sounds, anyone? Uh, Again, what I said is with reverbs, It's able to take reverb sounds and let me just uh, mute this and understand the input that is coming in to them and uh, and really create some magical stuff. We can show you here with uh, this glitch scaper if we start this up. So we've got True Pan running on here. Give it some width. And now when you're using a reverb or something in the, the chain, you want to put it before. If you put it after, you're not going to benefit from it, right? When normally, normally if you were doing using some kind of effect like this with anything else and you put the uh, reverb at the start, it would probably create some horrible noise because the, the reverb, it wouldn't understand the reverb. This is built to understand the reverb and displace it in a, in a, in a positive way. Does that make sense? It's hard to explain. I'm doing my best. So if I just hit play and stop, You can hear it's moving around that reverb, so it's actually able to understand reverb, which is very, very clever stuff. And we've got our tether here, which is quite crazy. Let's put on something like um, Seventh Angel. So now we've just got the effect. We've taken out Glitch Scaper.
So basically it's able to understand the input that is coming in and it's able to understand the, the effect that you have before the chain as well and not get blown out and create a, you know, distortion or, or input problems or sound. It, it, it's, the algorithm is working really hard in the background to create really lush sounds. It's not panning. It's, uh, it's, it's truly beautiful. I think it's wonderful. It's, uh, it's definitely one of my apps of the year. This is something that is going to get a hell of a lot of use. I can see Russ already like salivating uh, for his Delicate Giants album, for intros and stuff like that. It's just beautiful. Where it really works beautiful as well is with arpeggiated stuff, yeah? Let's add some reverb to it. 
Just a black, just a black hole. We'll put it before the chain. Yeah. Hey, Quantavox. Good to see you, Zoltan. Really interestingly enough, the last thing I'll do is I'll throw in something uh, mono, right? Because I'm pretty sure Hammerhead, is Hammerhead mono? I'm pretty sure Hammerhead's like mono. Um, let's see. I may be wrong. <laughs> is Hammerhead mono? <laughs> uh, let's see. Throw in a preset. Sure is, look at that mono, right there, look at that mono out input. So now if we add motion to it, it's just, it's just panning around. It's not, but if we add some reverb to this, <laughs> what am I doing? Let's just go with the black hole again, if I can spell. Too much fun. Way too much fun. The the application of this app is absolutely limitless. I really want to try it out with some stereo guitars. I uh, didn't have time to really set that up. I've only got to, you know, time is short. Got to get out of here in four minutes because Thomas is up next. But uh, look, you're bonkers if you're not going to spend five bucks on this. Absolutely bonkers. <laughs> let's close out AUM. Uh, let's get back over here. So, yes. Uh, there's, so there's instructions in there, as I showed you, but uh, here it is. Let's go back over here. It's $4.99. It's a steal. It'll change your life. <laughs> you'll, uh, you'll wake up tomorrow and you'll feel so much better because it's, it's literally fantastic. It's, it's definitely up there. It's already in my top five of the year, and we're only in, what month is it, April? This thing is going to get a hell of a lot of use and used in combination with Spatializer even. <laughs> 
on that. It's it's uh, excellent. Great job, Zoltan. It's really, really fucking cool. It's just fucking cool. So that is True Pan. It is truly awesome. Uh, and I, hope, I think maybe I do have some copies to give away to my patrons. I'm sure I, I saw Zoltan say something like that. So if you're a Patreon, check and we'll be doing a giveaway on a weekend. Yeah, yeah. Go get it. Go make some crazy things with it. You know, I say it all the time. Apps aren't Pokemon. You don't need them all. Buy the ones that can benefit your music. But for fuck's sake, release some fucking music. Don't just buy apps and do nothing with them. I see this all the time. I see people leave comments on my channel critiquing an app going, but it doesn't do this. And then I look at their YouTube channel and they've got no music. Please, for the love of God, folks, make some fucking music with these great apps. Don't just collect them. <laughs> do something with them. Anyway, that's my rant over. We got Thomas Christ coming up next um, on, on over on his channel. I'm going to dump you all over there. So as soon as the show's finished, the, the little thing will come up offering you to go to his channel. Tomorrow, guys, we've got a fantastic interview. We've got Hugh Caldwell coming on the show, so hopefully you can come and join me for that. It's going to be a great interview. He's an amazing guitarist. You'll need a translator. He's Scottish. All right, warning in advance. Uh, <laughs> um, on the weekend also, on my other channel, How to Mac on iOS, our second episode will be live. More exploration of Mac OS. If you want to come over and check out that over on How to Mac on iOS, it's my new channel where it's all learning the Mac, yeah. And on the weekend, I will be doing a live performance playing your covers once again, Community Covers Part 5, I think. So your song may be being played on my show this weekend. All right, I'm out of here. Thomas is up next. He's premiering my brand new song. Boom! Remember, do the things that make you happy. Mistakes make you better, and we'll all rise together. Thank you, Zoltan, for the code and for making a great app. See you later. Boom. We'll all rise together Cause you make me shine better